Hi guys, welcome back to another Red Dog Gaming video where we are doing another Napoleon Total War online battle. Now we're going to have to pause because it does start with an explosive start as usual. Now the map is Homestead. You can see all these large sort of um, plateaus up here that, the, uh, that you tend to fight over as well as a few buildings dotted here and there which are obviously very hard. Now the rules for this game was no artillery. As you can see, no one has any artillery at all. And we have a combined Ottoman, French, Austrian, Unholy Alliance versus a big army of Prussia. So let's go through the army composition. One thing to note guys, this was sent in by our good friend Karl von Clauschwitz, who we've been playing with a lot on the channel. As you can see, he is a very good player. Um, and in this battle, he's going to show that once again. So thank you very much for Carl for sending this video in. Without further ado, let's get going with the army composition. So out here on the left, we have the Ottomans, which have 10 Nizam Ikadit infantry. Please someone tell me how to pronounce this. I don't know how to pronounce this. Nizam the first Kadit infantry? Nizam I Kadit infantry? Nizam EK to infantry, I'm not sure, but 10 of these boys over here. He's got three of the Nizam Kadit uh, light infantry. He has three of the mounted Nizam Kadit uh, mounted riflemen, which are awesome. And two of the glorious Silatar Guard. Look at these boys, ready to go. Very strong cav unit there. And he is led by... Ibrahim Basha. So he has he doesn't have a standard general's bodyguard, so he should have a stronger general than usual. Now Carl in the middle with the French, of course, as we always know. He has many Chevaux Leger Lancers, three Chevaux Leger Lancers. So not going with a full chasseur a cheval uh, horses this time, cavalry. So three Chevaux Leger Lancers and three of the chasseur a cheval. There they are, the very OP, very strong unit. Um, he has three of the standard chasseur. Look at the glorious light infantry of the French over there. He has one Polish Legion, fantastic unit, especially in melee. Uh, how many Swiss foot? Four Swiss foot, which is another really good, strong line infantry unit. And he has one Old Guard. The glorious boys are ready to go into action. Look at them. There they are. One of the Young Guard and one of the 18th Regiment d'Infantre de Ligne of called the brave le brave now over to the austrians on the far right flank if we are looking this way and the austrians have three german fusiliers here they are glorious boys two hungarian fusiliers with the blue pants he has one of the archduke where are you where are you pretty boys here you are Archduke Charles Legion, very elite infantry, one of the 47th Czech Regiment, another very elite unit, and one of the 1st Regiment, the Emperor's own, the glorious Austrian Guards, very strong units there as well. Um, he has five Grenzers, so five light infantry in this one, brown and blue is their colour scheme, which... Not going to lie, doesn't go together very well at all. <laughs> what can we say? And six of the glorious Lancers, the Ulans. And he himself is led by Joseph Alvinci. I believe you pronounce that that way, but I'm probably wrong again. And over here we have the giant Prussian army. Now this one to note is not led by a general. The foot guards are actually the general's unit. We're just going to add all the Prussian units up together, guys, to, uh, in the sake of time. Otherwise, it would take forever. So we have eight of the Prussian fusiliers as lights across this whole army. We also have four of the very elite Silesian Schutzen, a very elite rifle unit. And they actually look fantastic. Very nice indeed. He has 19, well not he, all three of these guys have 19 musketeers combined. 19 of the standard musketeer regiment. Six foot guards between them. I believe they have two each. And there is one eighth life regiment in this army over here. Here they are. 
Glorious boys. Very good elite infantry regiment. Again, not quite as fancy as these boys with their pom-poms on their helmets, on their shakos, but, you know, pretty cool nonetheless. There is one other infantry regiment that you don't normally see, and that is the 1st East Prussian Grenadier Battalion, uh, which is very weird. You don't normally see Grenadiers on the multiplayer map at all. So he has six Lancers in here somewhere. So here are some of the Prussian Lancers. Very nice indeed. There is a Freikorps, Lutzko's Freikorps, very much militia Hussars, basically. One Life Hussars, Elite Hussars with the Brandenburg Skull upon their caps, which is fantastic. Very nice indeed. How many normal Hussars? Three normal of the normal Hussars. Here they are. There they are. Looking very fancy. One Cuirassier, very strong heavy cavalry unit. And one Dragoon, if we can find those guys. One Dragoon somewhere. Uh, one Dragoon. There is one Dragoon. Trust me, guys. Ah, here it is. One Dragoon unit. Fantastic. And they're all led by normal generals, apart from this guy, who's actually not brought a general, brought a foot guards, which is a bit of a weird choice. But I guess we'll see how that works out. So let's play, guys. Get into the battle. And as you can see, the cavalry is coming forward for a grand battle upon the plateaus. And here they come, facing down each other, scouting out the enemy and seeing what they can do. The Austrian over here got his lancers, his Uhlans ready to go. Karl has his guys ready to go in the middle. And here come the Ottomans as well. It does look like the Prussians are slightly outnumbered. Um, and they do not have any mounted rifle in, uh, cavalry because you can't get them as Prussia. So that might prove fatal. But here we come, boys. Look at this. Giant cavalry battle in the middle. Here come the Uhlans versus the Lutzko's Freikorps. And as you can see, the Austrians are heavily outnumbering the Prussians over there. And sir, in the middle, sir, the Prussians are heavily outnumbering the Allied forces. It's a very big battle for cavalry supremacy in the middle here. Look at this. Absolutely fantastic. But as you can see on the map, it does look... Like, there's about equivalent amount of cavalry on the red side as the blue side. But as you can see, the Prussians pushing hard forward. Same as Karl over here. And the Austrians. And look at this. The Austrians have gone for a full charge down the hill. Followed through with their cavalry supremacy. And they are shredding some of these infantry regiments. Even though they were able to form square, the Austrians are pushing very hard over there. But the cavalry battle continues, guys. Look at this huge mess. And the Ottoman cavalry is not even in position yet, ready to fight this battle. Here come the Prussian infantry. And this is probably not the greatest tactic, charging your infantry in. Because they will lose in melee against cavalry. Over here, the mass rout continues done by the Austrian cavalry. They have been absolutely fantastic. And here comes the Austrian Fusiliers, ready to fire. Come on, boys. Let's get those weapons out. Fire. Look at that. Some volleys straight. Point blank range into the Prussians. And with that cavalry charge, this Prussian army is practically done. There's not much left of it. They're all routing. And here comes Karl flanking around this side. The Ottomans are taking a more conservative approach, but they don't actually need to go fast. Because of the strength of the right flank move by the Austrians. And the push by the French in the middle. Led by Karl himself. Which is fantastic. And as you can see he's got his Swiss foot up. Firing into the enemy. Come on boys. Well done. And the French cavalry seems to win out in the middle. Combined with the Austrian Silitar Guard. Look at these boys. They're still there. Even with down to eight. And 12. They are still not routing, which is fantastic. Shows you the strength of a non-standard general. Over here, this Prussian player really needs to push if he wants to save some of the other troops that are in this battle. Some of the other armies. And as you can see, this Prussian player has withdrawn, leaving this one exposed on this flank. Ottomans fighting side by side with the Swiss. 
What a glorious sight to see. Both with their red uniforms and the Prussian player is going to take his leave of this plateau. But as you can see, Karl is not letting up at all and he is pushing hard on this Prussian flank. And this Prussian army and this Prussian army are pretty much, pretty much split at this point. But look at this, boys. Ulan still going in the middle. They were absolutely destructive in this battle so far. Absolutely ruining these Prussian troops. And as you can see, the five Grenzers just going to battle with the Grenadiers and the Foot Guards. Doing some serious damage. Here come the last of the Ulans. The fatal charge of the Ulans. Let's go, boys. They're absolutely knackered. They're very tired. That is the... The most they can muster. And there they go. A tiny little charge into the foot guards. Not doing fantastically. But they were down to the very last troops. And they had done magnificently before. Here is Karl with his double layered troops. And as you can see this Prussian army is in complete disarray. These guys rushing backwards with not much left to do. And as you can see the press of the red armies is absolutely lethal and brutal at that point this point and they are rushing backwards with nowhere really to run and there's still a lot of troops left for the um for the french and ottoman armies and including the austrians but the austrians are pretty much done over here cleaning up the last of the prussian rebellious forces that are left there is hardly any left. The Archduke Charles Legion going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the foot guards over here, which is brutal. But as you can see, Karl is pushing forward really heavily, doubling up the line so that they'll fire. They shouldn't fire into each other if they're this close, guys. That's one thing to note. So if you are in a sticky situation, you can kind of double them up like this without them firing into each other, which is a very good tactic that he's used once again. And he's charging the National Guard in with a few experience into the Musketeers try and disrupt their firing pattern and look at them look at this glorious boy in his wig fighting with the sword the officer leading from the middle not really the front but the middle i guess i guess it is the front now that is the prussian fusiliers right there come on my boy come on officer let's go lieutenant maurice that's what she we should call him glorious let's oh no lieutenant maurice has been shot but as you can see the Prussian army in full retreat right now. And look at this. The Mounted Nizam Kadit charging through the, uh, the running troops. Trying to break them. Doing some decent damage. Karl has this flank pretty much sewn up. Doing absolutely shredding some of these musketeer regiments on this side. And the Austrians are now in the fight. Because there's very little resistance left on the right hand side. Here they are flanking. Very nice. But they retreat even more. And Carl is going to mop them up very nicely in the middle here, as you can see. Here they are retreating. And the Ottomans are going to engage this left-hand side. So one of the generals has died. Where is that? Let's see. Uh, it's over on the right-hand side. One of the general, the Austria, the Prussian general on the right has died. But here the battle rages in the forest. As Carl pushes his troops forward. Here they go. The young guard marching forward. Ready to fire upon the Prussians one more time. Or to charge maybe. We'll see. Here they go. One final push. And you can even see in this. This Prussian army has itself become kind of disconnected from this side. And Carl is using that to his advantage once again. To try and flank them over here. Which is a fantastic move. Pushing into the side of the foot guards. A very elite regiment as well. Which will do damage if not suppressed. But this is the old guard. The most glorious of regiments in the whole French army. And the whole Napoleonic era probably. But young guard. Young guard retreating. But here come the Polish Legion. A very decent regiment in melee. Uh, not quite as good as the foot guards, but as a normal line unit goes, a very decent regiment. And as you can see over here, the 8th Life Regiment taking serious damage as they try and fight through this one. Here we are, boys. Fire! Fire against the impending doom that comes to you. 
But there isn't much of this left-hand flank Austrian army. They are trying to flank around this side, but at this point, it's pretty much futile. Look at the hordes of Austrian troops flooding across the gap, ready to fight. Here they go. More melee going on. Where is this melee fighting? More Polish legion fighting amongst the trees of the homestead. I believe the homestead's an Italian map. So these are Italian trees. Fought over by the French and the Prussians. The Ottomans and Austrians, which is interesting. Austrians have probably got the most right to be there out of anyone. Um, here they go. The foot guards are going to break eventually at some point, boys. Very nice. As you can see, Karl has managed to push all the way through with this Swiss foot. Doing some serious, serious damage on these boys. And absolutely crushing the Prussian center. Which was amazing. Some great work once again. All that's left is this tiny unit of foot guards. They're going to go for a final fatal charge. Come on the Swiss foot. You can do it. And there they go. They don't want part of the action anymore. And here come, here comes Karl on the flank of the Prussians. Ready to defeat this final Prussian army. The Austrians moving in behind as well. But there's so many troops left. So many troops left on all sides. The uh, Karl's Alliance have done an amazing job. An amazing job. Crushing them. Crushing the enemy. Fighting and originally winning the Cav Charge. I think those Austrian Uhlans did an amazing job over there. The Cav in the center absolutely crushed the enemy Cav. And basically stopped their advance dead in its tracks. While waiting to come around this side and pile on the pressure. Here they go. The final. Look at this Swiss foot. 25 of them. Glorious Swiss foot regiment. We'll call them the Brave. The Bloody Whatever you want to call them. But they go for the final charge. Down to 16 men. That is unbelievable. Followed by the young guard. The glorious young guard of France. Routing those Prussian musketeers. And across. Even the general of the Prussians. The foot guards. Where is the general? Let's see. Is he dead? He might be. I do not see an officer in here, so I'm assuming he's dead. But yeah, the final Prussian units falling to the combined might of the Austrians, French, and Ottomans. What a glorious battle, though, guys. A glorious 3v3 fought across the whole Homestead map. And it's interesting to see Homestead. You don't really see it that often. And you don't really see a battle without artillery that often. The final Musketeers in square formation. Hold, boys! Hold for king and country. But no, they will not be able to hold. There was a couple of units left over here, but not much. And here come the Grenzer spam. The five Grenzer regiments ready to do some damage on that foot guards. Here it goes, Ibrahim Basha personally chasing down the troops. There they go. I don't know why he's running them away. Because, you know, he's not going to win the battle anymore, is he? There they go. Dying. And the Prussian Fusiliers. The last one. Here comes Carl's general. Come on, Carl. The final blow, fittingly, goes to Carl. Fantastic. What a fantastic battle again, guys. And how many times can I say fantastic and glorious in one battle once again? Well, look at this. Let's look at the stats. Carl within a huge amount of kills, 1,478. The Austrian, the Austrian had a huge amount of kills as well, but very few losses, crushing the Austrian on that flank. But the Austrians did, uh, Prussians did pretty decent, still getting a, a reasonable amount of troops, but they just fell under the combined might of this alliance. And obviously led by Carl, who is an extremely good player. Um, so. No shame in losing to these great players. Uh, the Ottomans, obviously, about equal. But they didn't have to really par participate. They just had to hold the left flank. So sometimes, you know, the stats look different. Like, they, the stats don't look as good as you think they are for, for a winning army. But the Ottoman player didn't really have to go in and make too many kills. They just had to hold the left flank and wait 
for the Austrians to come around the flank and Karl to crush the middle and they were good. But let's have a look at some of Karl's troops. This young guard, 169 kills. Old guard, 135. That is amazing. Swiss foot, 135. Polish legion, wow. Some really good stats there from the from some of those troops. Some of the just standard troops doing some really decent uh, damage. But guys, let me know what you think of this battle. I thought it was epic. A great 3v3 on Homestead. Please let me know how you thought it went. Um, and give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a subscribe. That would be amazing. It really helps the channel out. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I'll see you again on the next video.